Perfect. Well, good morning. My name is Christine, and I'm really happy and pleased to be with you, um, which just happens to be Valentine's Day. And this month is really the energies are supportive of self-love and self-care. What we want to talk about today is vulnerability and being vulnerable and how it takes, perhaps takes courage to be vulnerable and how you allow that courage to be present. And when I, the way I work, I look at consciousness. I look at the consciousness of the spirit, look at the energy and the vibration of what you're, um, of where you're at and where your best is. And being vulnerable allows grace to be present. And grace is a vibration and a consciousness that is very, um, it's very serene. Grace has not a lot of, you know, if you look at the energy of grace, it's very mellow. But within that mellow is strength. And when I look at vibration, when it's really erratic or, or chaotic or fearful, um, you know, it can almost look like uh, radio or radio frequency that's just very scratchy up and down like that. But the way I see energy, I always see it in, in, as music. And if I look at a really dense energy field where it's really difficult to be vulnerable because there's a lot of fear and there's a lot of what if and self, um, not a lot of self-confidence perhaps in that, it looks like there's too many guitar strings. So where normal guitar is five or six strings, if I look in a really dense field, it's 50 or 60 strings and it's not pleasant to the ear. It's not easy to play, which is very, very hard. So if I talk about vulnerability as grace, it's grace allows you the opportunity not only to be courageous, but to courageously self-love yourself and to embody and allow experiences that are in your best interest. And vulnerability scares the heck out of some people, being vulnerable. It's like walking in the room naked. But when you allow yourself to be vulnerable, and I want to interchange the world authentic. When you allow yourself to be authentic, that's when you allow the best of everything to also be present. And it can be a practice, maybe, of being courageous and being vulnerable and allowing what's not working you, what gets in the way, allowing that to be present, being courageous enough to see where I don't have self-love, to see where I judge myself, to see where I perhaps diminish myself. And that space of vulnerability allows that to be maybe overly present, very, very extreme. And I just want you to take a moment and feel into what being vulnerable means to you because we all have our own definition of things. We use this common language, but what it means to me and what it means to you may, may, may be different. And for some, it may be, you may just have a sense of um, unease in the stomach, or you may get palpitations or anxiety in your heart. And I'm getting a hit that the, um, can everybody hear me okay? Okay, good. Just, if, if you can't, just um, let me know. And, um, and I'll adjust if I can. But vulnerability, to me, vulnerability and courage go hand in hand. Because it great, takes, at times, it can take great courage to allow your fear. It's really the illusions of who we are to be present. And what comes to mind first, and I was thinking about this morning, it's really interesting because this week I had a lot of people coming to me with thoughts of inadequacy and not knowing how to trust themselves or not knowing where, how to be brave. And as well, this is a time in human evolution where so much is coming forward to be transformed. It's been a heck of a year. And so we're gonna be continue to be given opportunities to be our authentic self and eliminate that which doesn't serve, serve us. And that's where vulnerability and courage comes in. 
So I was thinking about this morning and you know, we can all have times where we think, well, I was vulnerable and maybe it, it didn't go the way you wanted. Or you feel like maybe someone didn't re respond the way you wanted to. So when you think of vulnerability and courage, I want you to eliminate expectations of how it will be, what you're revealing in whatever way you're revealing it, remove the expectation of how it will be received. And stay in the moment of your, just your own strength, your own courage, your own belief in yourself. And even if you're not sure what belief in yourself feels like it, just ask for that to be present and, and understand that maybe you're learning what belief in yourself feels like. I had the opportunity a few years ago to go zip lining, which was something I really, really wanted to do. And in my, in my mind was, I'll be able to get up to the top. I thought I, I thought I would just climb a couple of stairs and get hooked up, which seemed a little scary to me, but then I would be able to like fly over trees and that seemed really exciting and exhilarating to me. But when I got to the actual zip line place, it was not what I expected. They had to climb this great big pole that to me looked like it was a mile high. I don't know if it was 60, 60 feet high or 80 feet high or 40 feet high. I know it was more than 10 feet high, but it was extremely high. And I wanted, part of me just wanted to leave. <laughs> I did not, want, did not want to stay there because I was terrified of climbing heights when I didn't feel secure. And I was terrified of, of ter maybe a little bit of terrified of showing showing myself fully in front of other people. The other people I was I was with were very athletic. I was the only one only one there. They'd all done it many many times, but I did it, and it took me a long time to do it. And in my vulnerability, I allowed myself to hesitate. I allowed myself a few tears. I allowed myself to wonder if I could do it. And what happened in that space of being really authentic and I let the vulnerable part was I let others know that this was really scary for me. And even, excuse me, and even though I knew I was safe because of course I had equipment on and it was a place that had done it many, many times and weren't gonna let me get hurt. In my moment of vulnerability, what I couldn't provide for myself, others provided for me. They encouraged me, they cheered me on. It was really a place of grace. They held that space for me to find without hesitation, without judgment, without an expectation that I'd go up quickly like they did and I'd get over it. They were in a space that I had created for myself, even if I wasn't aware of it, of grace, to allow me to experience what I need to experience to go to my next best self. And so they encouraged me, they reminded me of things that I'd already done that were, were um, scary perhaps or difficult. And it took me a while, but I got to the very top and I was able to go across the zip line. And that was actually a two step, um, two steps of courage because I had to go to the top of the pole. And then once I got to the top of the pole, I had to take the next step of courage and be very vulnerable and jump off the platform, which didn't occur to me that that would also be a little scary. So in my moment of vulnerability, I not only received love and encouragement from others, but I embedded an acre in, inside of me, the remembrance that I can have new experiences that I can spread my wings, that my best self is even always, always present, even if I don't remember that, and even if it's hidden a little bit. And, try, and chime in if you have any questions or comments. Another thing about being vulnerable, again, it allows, it allows your best self to be present, and allows your best self to be present for others. For many of us, being vulnerable with our emotions is one of the most difficult things. We judge the emotions. We don't want to feel the emotions. We tamp them down. And we're reminded of 
I'm actually reminded of when you can be with someone in their worst moments. And what comes to mind right now is sitting with someone, perhaps as they take their last, last breaths in life. That's a very vulnerable spot, but it's also filled with grace. Because you are allowing love to be present and you are allowing whatever uncomfortableness you have to come to the surface and you're brave enough to work through that so that you can have a very authentic moment or days or weeks or whatever it may be. But in that moment, you're authentically connecting not only to yourself, but to another person. So what I encourage you to do today is reevaluate what vulnerability means to you. It's not soft, it's not weak. It's actually freedom. Being vulnerable, it like takes off the shackles of unworthiness. It takes off the shackles of um, recrimination. Sometimes we hide, hide um, self-love under blame and shame. And when you can be vulnerable without expectation, you start to peel away those layers. And as you practice being vulnerable, because like everything in life, it's a practice until it becomes a skill. It becomes just a natural way of being. And soon you don't think of yourself as being vulnerable. You think of yourself as being in the flow. I don't restrict experiences that come to me. I don't restrict, I don't restrict my authentic spirit from being present. And I also understand that not only connected to higher, my higher self and to the universe and God, whatever your word may be, the source, I'm also connected deeply to others. Because I'm allowing the natural flow of love and connection. I'm allowing my intuition to be present. And being vulnerable can be scary. And the best way to allow yourself to be vulnerable is to pause. Just take a pause. And perhaps put your hand on your heart. And I can, what I do is when I, whenever I speak and talk to people, I look at who's um, present and who may be present at a later time. And I can see that vulnerability brings up a fear of being attacked or a fear of being misunderstood, but mostly being vulnerable for some, we just feel very exposed and raw and leaving you with the feeling that I'll never do that again. Whatever the experience, I'm not going to do that again. But when you limit yourself in life, you limit all experiences, not just the one that you deem is undesirable. So if I limit courage or I limit sadness or even if I limit rejection, I'm also limiting acceptance. I'm limiting joy. I'm limiting, I'm limiting happiness. So the art of being vulnerable allows more. It allows more into your life. It allows more friendship, more self-love. It allows community. It allows healing. One of the most vulnerable spots we're in right now is that soul history is coming up. That which isn't working for us is now really, really present in our lives. And we can remain in the old habits of distraction, complaining, criticizing, blaming, shame, um, distracting ourselves with activity, distancing ourselves, all the things that perhaps have worked until this point, but you can't evolve without allowing yourself to be authentic, allowing yourself to be vulnerable. There's great beauty in vulnerability. There's courage, but there's also great beauty. 
Because when I have a vulnerable moment and I say, this is me, all warts and my beauty and my ugly and my messy and my sane, present, I'm allowing you to do the same. And we can mirror that for each other. We can say, it's okay. It's okay. Because I'm always here. And again, you talk to yourself first. I'm here. I'm with you. I love you. I understand you. And if I don't understand you, I'm working on that. But I'm allowing myself space for that. It's what we do for ourselves, we do for another. And we're all in different places, and sometimes we do it for someone else as we learn to do it for ourselves. But vulnerability is a consciousness. It's an energy. It's a vibration. It's a frequency. And I really want you to look at it as being unlimited and change your definition of vulnerability. Vulnerability allows you to discover what's hidden behind the fear. And you can't heal what's hidden until it's revealed. And if you look back at childhood, perhaps, where of course we all start, but looking at the toddler for that very first time gets up and tries to walk across the floor. As you get up on your two feet and you're wobbly, and you're not sure, there's a bit of anticipation, a bit of excitement. There may be a bit of who's here to support me. But there's also delight in trying something new. So hang on to that. Anchor in that when you feel vulnerable, that you're allowing something new. You're allowing what needs to be healed to be brought forth so that we can transformed into something new. And you're allowing your spirit to expand. That's what conscious evolution is, expansion, awareness, self-love. Within that is courage to be seen, to be heard, and to connect not only to yourself, to others. Does this resonate with you? Does this make sense? Do you have experiences that you can relate to? You know, and sometimes being vulnerable brings up a lot of emotion, brings up sadness or brings up Just like right now, it just brings up a lot of sadness. And sadness is a clue. Sadness is there's a place in me that does not feel nurtured. There's a place in me that needs acceptance. There's a place in me that just needs love. And when you're afraid of being vulnerable, that's the biggest fear is that you won't be loved. Within that may be the fear of ridicule or the fear of failure, but all those are just another way of saying that you won't be loved. So practice self-love. And then the opportunity to be vulnerable and the courage to be vulnerable will show up in your life. And self-love is a little different than self-care, but it's aligned with self-care. And I want you to take a few moments today to think of when you've been courageous, when you've gone beyond your limited boundaries, when you've tried something new. And also take a moment and because we're emotional beings, go into that emotional field. What did it feel like when you're vulnerable? 
What was the value of being vulnerable and what was the result? And don't hold the attachment that it's good or bad. Just recognize that it's a field of grace and it's expansion for you. And then also take a few moments and see how you felt when you're with someone who's very vulnerable. Could you be courageous enough to be with them and stay with them and hold a place of grace and love? Or is it too uncomfortable for you? And if it was too uncomfortable for you, that's okay too, because you're learning. And you'll be given that opportunity again to be vulnerable with someone and hold them in love. So being vulnerable with courage is actually one of our greatest gifts. It's, it's, what I'm hearing is it's spirit in action. Because growth and evolution doesn't happen with limit. Growth and evolution, I won't say it won't happen, but it's very slow without courage. With a lot, without allowing shifts and change. We get very comfortable sometimes. And in that comfort is complacency. And is that comfort is maybe, maybe within that comfort is I don't deserve more. I'm okay where I'm at. This is enough. I can guarantee you, you do, you do deserve more. You came in to experience more. You came in to experience everything in every way. To experience the highs and the lows and everything in between, the joy and the sorrow. But the more vulnerable, vulnerable you are, the more you love yourself through the messy and through the vulnerable, you're now creating a space for more of the happy, the joy, the connection real connection, deep connection. And I, I wanna share another personal story, if that's okay with you. And being, you know, exposing yourself can be so hard and so scary. And for me, a lot of, you know, I, I didn't even know where it came from, but just, I had a lot of self-judgment, self-criticism, a lot of shame growing up. And, you know, you think you can hide it, but you really can't because it affects the way you relate to people. It may not be verbal or it may not be um, even a conscious thing you're doing, but it's in your energy field. And I had been married maybe, I don't know, 10 years. I don't know how husband for 16, 17 years. And I remember the one night that I could actually maybe not reveal everything, but reveal more. And I could barely, I was crying so hard, I could barely talk. But I had to tell him my deepest fear that if he saw who I was, he wouldn't love me. But I was in such pain and such self. Um, you know, I hid the pain and it just, when you hide it, it just kind of, you, you keep anchoring it in every single day. You anchor it in every day. Anchor in, I'm not worthy enough. There's something shameful about me. There's something unlovable about me. Even though my actions were for the most part loving and kind and I was able to, you know, most people thought I had good marriage. I think my husband thought we had good marriage. I was able to be present with my kids and be loving and have friends. But this deep, deep underlying current of unworthiness, shame, and that there's no way anybody could really truly love me if they knew who I was. So anyhow, cut to the chase. I just opened up and I told him that I'm so afraid you won't love me. I'm so afraid there's something wrong with me. I'm so afraid that I'm damaged. I'm so afraid. I don't even know what it is, but I just went into the fear. And you know what happens when you allow that to be dissolved? you barely remember what it was because you don't carry that feeling with you anymore. But my marriage blew up. 
Not, I don't mean in a bad way. I mean, expanded in love, right? And not only my, you know, the way that I knew he could support me and the way that he could really see me, but then I started to see myself in a different way. And for a while, you may look at yourself through other people's eyes, and that's okay. But be really clear if you're looking through their eyes of judgment on you and criticism, or if you're allowing them to see love. And you'll get to see and notice the difference because recognize the beauty and the wonder and the grace and the glory of you. Recognize the loving being that you are. You're not damaged or small or diminished or unworthy. Those are illusions we have in place through experience, but they're not really us. There's just something that happened in moments in time that we take with us and carry with us, and we think that becomes us. They're just experiences we had that give, give us information. And if you don't process the information, you, we, we think it's us. So vulnerability allows you, to, allows you to heal. And once you get beyond the healing, it allows you to be creative. Think of, you know, first person that comes to mind, think of Picasso. He didn't paint like other painters. He didn't perhaps, you know, um, I don't even know if he went to art school. I don't know anything about Picasso other than what his paintings look like. But if he would have been, I'm just going to do what everybody says is the right way to paint and the right way to be creative, he wouldn't have been Picasso. Right? So you have to be, allow yourself to be vulnerable to let your best success, expression of self be present. When your best expression of self is present, it increases more and more. And then that creates a new consciousness for you. So on this day, I encourage you to find your courage in whatever way that may be and redefine your definition of vulnerability. See if what I say makes sense to you. Take what does and what doesn't. Hopefully it does make sense to you and you can feel it. And um, congratulate yourself for the moments where you have been vulnerable. And always do your best to be present with yourself and to love yourself. And thank you very much for being with me today. If there's anything I can answer for you, I'm happy to do that. Thank you. Um, everybody's allowed to unmute themselves. Um, if they have questions for you, they can do that now. Okay. I'd also like to, um, since nobody has a question, I'd like to just take a few moments and just bring in the field of grace. And you may, hi. Hi, Ella. Hi. So for me, um, growing up, the message in our family was, you know, vulnerability was a sign of weakness and um, it invited opportunities for other people to take advantage of you. So for me, what's been difficult is developing those really intimate relationships. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that is hard, right? Because your, your natural, and again, I, it's not your natural way of being, but it became your normal way of being to not trust. Right. Right, it begins, I need to protect myself because people are gonna take advantage of me. And if I show any, if I open a crack, right? Right. <laughs> And when I people follow, an inch, they'll take the yard. Yeah, they'll take a yard. So just start re, like, just write it out. What, you know, is that actually true? Mm. And maybe you have 100 experiences where it actually has been true, but you'll find the one where it isn't. What I actually see is I see when um, it's like a pea pot or something, right? It has to crack open for the shoot to come out and reach the sun. That's how you get nurturing to actually crack. Allow yourself the vulnerability. And really, it's just, 
you know, honor your parents that that's, from their perspective, that was a way to protect you. That was their definition of love. It was our whole family, not just my yeah. parents. Not just, like the whole, right, the whole system, right? The whole system, right? right? Because right. they had experiences that created that. But yeah. part of the discernment is, is this valid right now? In this moment, and that's where intuition comes in, because your parents are trying to keep you safe, or your system was trying to keep you safe, right? Right. Okay. They don't want you to have harm. So as you get more trusting, and maybe you have a couple, you know, um, missteps where I thought that was correct and not, well, then you don't beat yourself up and say, well, I'm getting better at listening to myself and trusting, but you you open it up. And um, just just allow, what would it be like? Oh, I know what I was going to say. So the discernment is, um, sometimes I go from too far out and look at everything and I forget what I'm thinking. But um, so trust that is when you, your, your intuition will tell you when this is not a safe situation, right? Okay. This is not somebody I should let in my car because they're not safe. But maybe my intuition says, I can't help this person, right? Because actually helping someone gets you comfortable with accepting help for yourself. Right. That it's not, it's safe. So just allow yourself to, um, I really rewrite the definition of one safety for you and how you know when you're safe. And you, we all have those moments where, oh, I knew I should have done that or I didn't, or, you know, we just kind of get that feeling. And then see, is this, is this based on past experience, mine or someone else's, or is this actually the moment? Okay. And then I would actually absolutely honor those who gave you that information and then say, thank you but it's no longer valid right now because I'm in a totally different experience than you were. And when you do that, honey, when you allow the world to be different, it actually shows up different for you. Okay. So maybe, maybe just pay attention to how you see other people reacting without restriction. And maybe just get comfortable seeing that, oh man, they can really just, um, I don't know, I kind of just see you sitting in a park bench or something, or maybe you're in Target, just kind of watch how people help each other and that it's okay. Asking for help is, it's not, it is, it's, I'm glad you brought that up because that's a very big, it's an energy out there right now, right? Mm -hmm. It's a big, big energy, big, big energy. And we've, many of us been told that. Um, Yeah. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Just I encourage you to just let that sit with that a little bit and change that, and then ask ask for it. Ask the team to bring into you experiences this week and this month that will give you the opportunity to be vulnerable with safety. Oh, with safety. And okay, good. With safety, with safety. That's super important. To you, with safety, and that you'll be vulnerable with love. And it may even be you may even be something like you know you're um, in the grocery store, you're at Starbucks or wherever you go, and you're a dollar short. And instead of going into embarrassment, just like, oh, man, you may be surprised that somebody offers you the dollar. And that doesn't go into there's something wrong with you or you're vulnerable or like now they're thinking, you know, that I'm a poor person or that I can't provide for myself or blah, or that I'm stupid because I forgot my lot of I think just allow people to share with you and see how that shows up for you. I guarantee you, you will, you will get a good response. Yeah. All right. Thank you. Okay. You're welcome, honey. Thank you, yeah. Ella. Yeah. Um, hi, hi, Karen. I, hi. Hi, Christine. May I share something with this vulnerability please. has been coming up for the last couple of weeks. Yes, please. <clears throat> and I want to go back to, for five years, I was in the ACOA program, which is Adult Children of Alcoholics, mm -hmm. somewhere in my mid to late 30s. It changed my life. I have never been so vulnerable yeah. in my entire life. But I learned to move through vulnerable. But I remember two young men younger than me, maybe 26, 27, and they gave, we all took turns, had to volunteer to take turns to, to give the message when we came each week. Yeah. It took me two years to, to get the courage to do that. Yeah. That's an, another story. But um, after I'd done that, these two young men were au pairs for the summer. They were in a French program and they gave the talk and it was stunning. And I came up to them and I compl 
young, good looking man in front of all these people. There was at least 50 people at this program every time I was there. And I complimented them on how much I had gained from what they had shared with me. And I said, what I really want you to know is I want to thank you for your vulnerability, giving us your vulnerability. And I also want you to know how sexy it is. You mm -hmm. should have seen those right. two young men. Yeah. And I'm sure it made an impact, but that five years, the first time I gave the talk, I fretted mm -hmm. for the entire month. I didn't yeah. know I'm more by the seat of my pants and having to come up with something. And I remember I sat, I couldn't get out of my chair. I just sat in the middle of the room and I just did it. Mm -hmm. I talked three or four more times. And the other thing, people wouldn't show up and you had to do extemporaneous. I did an extemporaneous. I mean, my vulnerability was dripping all over myself, but I gained so much more confidence yeah. and belief in myself. And I tell the vulnerability story and how sexy it is whenever I have an opportunity, especially to men. I think men are can super be, sexy can be, when they're vulnerable. Yeah. And also don't allow themselves to be vulnerable oh. at all. So it's an interesting topic that's been coming up in the last couple of weeks. Thank you for letting me share that. But I, I think it's a, I did zip. Thank you for too. sharing. Thank you for sharing. Cause it is, it's in the energy field right now. It's in the energy field to come mm -hmm. forward. Mm -hmm. Last year we had to reveal things and kind of, yeah. you know, and this is, this is continuation of healing and um, no, thank you for sharing. That's really, really powerful. And, and honoring pleased, yourself. Thank you. I also do think that your um, intuition does come up. You know, you know, when you're, when you are vulnerable and unsafe yeah. and can back up, yep. but, um, and it's not that I don't feel vulnerable now. I don't, want yeah. anybody to get that impression yeah. but I moved through it a little bit easier yeah and didn't you see how you opened up into something new yeah oh when you allow the vulnerability something new opens up right extraordinary I mean I yeah. never would have no. guessed yeah. and and I'm not a speaker and I'm not a writer and you know but you're a heart you go right from the heart yes you go right from the heart and for me part it, I have a commonality with you because I'm not, I can't sit down and write a speech. I can write, you know, if I'm doing a class or workshop, I have an outline. It took me a while to think, actually think I'm okay doing it my way because I don't, I just, you know, I get my topic and I show up and that's how I do it best. When I try to have a formula, I can't do it. And it took oh, me- And I go, if, if you're like me, if I do have a formula, if I tr make a stab at it, I always go off track. I, I always go off track, but it took it's me a while of-, of other people are telling me I was doing it wrong and saying, yes, they're right. There's something, you know, I need yep. to do it their way. And being vulnerable was like, you know what? My vulnerable part was saying, no, I, I'm okay the way I am. You know, it works really good for me. You know, Great. <laughs> so, yeah. yeah, but thank vulnerability you. always opens up to something else. So thank you for sharing. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. I think that helped everybody. Yeah. Thank you. I think I'm Thanks, honey. just listening to Sharon, I guess. I've got two different mindsets when it comes to vulnerability, when it comes to relationships, mm -hmm. that's where it's more uh, difficult for me. But in terms of, you know, pushing myself to do new things like being out there um, speaking or teaching or mm -hmm. training, I've been able yeah. to do that and talk people into letting me do things, but uh, <laughs> it's more difficult yeah. with the, in, um, the personal relationships people. It's really difficult with intimate relationships, right? Or even a casual yeah. relationship, because casual relationship to be that leads to, well, if this didn't work, now there's no way I'm going to do an intimate relationship. Right. But also think about it through energy and consciousness because you're opening up a field. So even if you, you open up a little bit and that, you know, everybody's very serious, what if I tell someone I love them or I like them and they, I get deer in headlights, right? That's the last thing we yeah. want or they run away. There's a TV show, I think, where somebody said, I love you. And the other person says, I love cake. You know, that's not the answer we want, right? <laughs> so, <laughs> but when you go into that space of declaring, I feel love and I'm open to love, it may not work this time, but it'll work the next time. So it's, it's knowing that it doesn't define you. And that's what we think. It defines me if someone does, rejects me. 
And maybe they're not rejecting you. Maybe they can't even love themselves, which normally is what it is. I can't love you because I'm too terrified to love me. And you have commonality of where we weren't supported in love at an earlier age when we needed to, or love came in as, you know, fear of safety or whatever love came in as, but our definition of love is. So we're actually, it's okay when we get, I'm not saying it's great, right? It doesn't feel great when we get rejected, but it's okay because it allows the space. You're opening it up. I'm allowing love in. And you're changing your definition. I want you to write your definition out too of what love is because it doesn't have to be love is painful. It may be right now, love is painful. Love is you just keep it under wraps and maybe have 50 years of what love is painful, but really start rewriting it. No, love is generous. Love is kind. Love is supportive. Start rewriting it and read it. You start to bring that into your field. And then start small. Maybe not the big intimate relationship, but maybe the casual one. And a lot of times our fear, our fears are what paralyze us. And you think you, can, you can't declare something. And I remember as a kid, I'd watch people. I'm like, geez, it was so easy for them to ask for something. And I would agonize over it for days or weeks or months or minutes or whatever. You know, one like really silly thing is we'd go for Sunday drives with my parents. And I wanted an ice cream cone so bad. But I didn't want to ask in case my dad didn't have money in his pocket, or I didn't want, you know, I didn't want to make him feel bad, or whatever reason. I thought of all these reasons why I shouldn't ask, right? And there'd be my brother. He'd just burn out. Can we have an ice cream cone? My dad would say yes, or he'd say no. And nobody was hurt. And I'd be sitting there like, well, you know, I was just so, I was so sensitive to everybody's emotions, right? And perhaps that's you too, as we feel everything, perhaps, or perhaps you don't feel anything. Um, and neither one's right or wrong, but I just had to kind of watch them other people. It's okay to just, be, be brave and it was times I couldn't times I couldn't so I learned to not judge when I couldn't when I couldn't just realize I'll have another opportunity but you're right Ella relationships are tough when people have pets you know they're good trainers for us yeah <laughs> they help a lot yeah I, anything else yeah yeah um Oh, hello, Laura. I'm but, practicing yeah. the uh, courageous side. Uh, <laughs> for mm -hmm. several months, I'm going to be able to have my upper and lower plates in when I eat. But obviously, I'm not eating right now. So it takes yeah. a lot of courage on my part to show up visually when I'm not looking the way people would expect me to look. Right. It does. Our visual, right? Yep. But you're here now. Congratulations. I think you're beautiful and lovely, right? Your smile, you know, it may look different than what you're used to, but to me, it's a beautiful right. smile. And it does. It allows more in. Thank you. So, and, get, and it's part of it's just being comfortable with our beauty when we, when we think it's different. Because the beauty is within. It, we, we illuminate from the, out, you know, from the inside out. And um, about 10 years ago, I had cancer. And I did not want to wear a wig. It was just too hot and everything. And um, I didn't mind being bald. It was actually a sense of freedom for me because then, you know, it was a lot easier to get dressed in the morning and blah, blah, blah. But, um, but it freaked people out. It freaked people out sometimes. And one little girl in the neighborhood came over and she, she didn't like it. She's like, put Chad on right away. So I said, okay, put my hat on. <laughs> about two hours later, two other little girls came over and they brought their makeup kits. They were about eight or nine years old. And they, it was Easter. And first they started with chalk and they decorated my whole head. And then that time didn't stay, so they put makeup on my whole head, and they made me look like an Easter egg. It was awesome. And then they took me around to all the other neighbors because they wanted to sell their services. Like, look what a great job we do on Christmas Eve. You know? <laughs> I love it. And, and other people, you know, so it's like you just, this is me right now. This is me right now. And it was, you know, and then look at the great experience I got out of it. <laughs> and instead of staying confined, just like you are, so like, be you. With or without your plate. So good job, honey. Love that. I appreciate everybody sharing. You know? And what we just did now, we just increased the field of acceptance. We just increased the field of acceptance, which is part of love. And the next time you go to have an experience with somebody, it won't be as scary or you'll actually be surprised. Wow, they gave me back what I wasn't expecting. 
He gave me back what I needed. What's my birthright? And it is our birthright to be loved and accepted. It is your birthright. It's in your vibrational field. It's in your consciousness. And when we forgot that, we have people in our lives to remind us. And most times they remind us, maybe not through loving gestures, right? Or not where it's safe. But it's always present. Always, always present. So thank you, ladies. I appreciate you. you showing up for your, I appreciate you showing up for yourself and giving us, you know, because sharing is vulnerable and being online is vulnerable, everything. But, um, you know, this is our year of expansion, whatever that means for you. So be brave, friends. Be brave.